Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we have some release information for Sonic Origins that came with a chart that's kind of confusing. And it looks like PlayStation is wanting to also get into the ad business on free-to-play games. We have those and other topics to cover, but before we get started, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. That's the best way to let me know you enjoy the content on this channel. Now let's get started. So earlier this week we had ratings and we had artwork for Sonic Origins leak out. And now we get an official announcement for the game. And it's going to launch on June 23rd, which is actually Sonic's birthday. And it will be for PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. And with the PS4 version, it will actually upgrade to a PS5 version. So if you buy the PS4 version, it'll work for both systems without any extra charge. And this compilation will add a whole bunch of features to it. It'll have some new areas, new animations, and it'll be an anniversary mode, which will give you unlimited lives and a 16 by nine resolution. There will also be missions that you can collect coins and use those in the game's museum mode to unlock new content and challenges and special stages. And there will also be a story mode that will let you play through all of the games in sequence. Now along with this information, Sega released this chart of the different versions of the game and it's highly confusing. But I'll hope to clarify this, the three center sections are just DLC. And the second column is what you get if you pre-order the game, and it doesn't matter if it's the standard edition or the digital deluxe edition. So I cut out these three center columns here, and now we just have the standard and the deluxe editions, and I added what would be the pre-order bonus to each of these columns. So the biggest difference, as you'll see here, is with the Deluxe Edition, you'll get hard missions, character animations in the main menu, camera controls over the main menu islands, character animations during music islands, and additional music tracks from Mega Drive and Genesis titles. So if you order the Standard Edition, you will not get hard missions. Now if you do go with the standard edition, you can add everything in using the DLC, which they haven't released what the price is just yet. However, the only way you can get mirror mode at this point is to pre-order. Mirror mode is not included in the standard or the deluxe editions by default. Now I said that is as of now, who knows if six months after this releases, if Sega makes Mirror Mode available for purchase to everyone. But as it sits right now, the only way to get everything included in this game would be to get the Digital Deluxe Edition. Now I haven't heard of a physical release for this game yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's something Sega releases maybe six months to a year after the digital version. Now as far as price goes, the standard edition will be $39.99 and the deluxe edition will be $44.99. So that means you get all these additional features for only $5 more. I would suspect that the two DLC packs they have here will probably cost more than $5 total. So I think you'll get the best deal by going ahead and picking up the digital deluxe edition. Now I definitely plan on picking this up, I'm somewhat of a Sonic fan, and I normally wouldn't buy these Sonic games again, but considering these are ports and not emulated, and the extra features that they've added, it's something I definitely want to play through. Now I believe it was a few weeks ago, we talked about how Microsoft was looking at adding ads into free to play games. Say for example you're in a racing game and they can throw ads up on a billboard. Well it appears that Sony is looking at pretty much the same thing. Now this was originally published by Business Insider, but I've got a good summary here from Video Games Chronicle. Sony Interactive Entertainment is reportedly planning to integrate advertisements in free to play games. Now they go on to talk about how this is a way to incentivize more companies to make free-to-play games. 
But something I thought was interesting in this is that it's claimed Sony hasn't yet decided if it will take a cut of ad revenue and that it could charge partners for data on consumer behavior in PlayStation games. So if you'll remember the article about Microsoft looking at this, they said they weren't interested in taking a cut, but was interested more in setting this up as a revenue stream for the software developers and the ad placement companies. Microsoft also insisted that they were very concerned about keeping the player's data private. So this article here from a trusted source is saying that it could charge partners for data on consumer behavior. So my first question is, what kind of data are they going to be giving them? Would it be things like, what are some of the other games this player has purchased? Or how about even browsing history on the console? Now this report says the goal is for the ads to appear like they're part of the game, like digital billboards in sports stadiums. And that formats could include ads that give viewers rewards for watching ads and promotions for in-game items like avatar skins. So overall, I'm not that concerned about ads being pumped into free-to-play games. I mean, there is a revenue stream there to be made, especially if players aren't having to pay a subscription fee to play the game. But if they're going to be giving up personal information or browsing habits or game playing habits to ad companies, then that's a no thank you for me. But of course, this is early information from a trusted source and isn't anything official. So I'll withhold my judgment until we have something official about this. Next, for a quick little note, Sony has released a firmware updater for the PlayStation 5 controller that you can use to update the firmware on a Windows PC. So you can see here it lists the system requirements and it's pretty straightforward. You just download the updater, you run it, it may then have some updates that it needs to get and then connect your controller via USB and it'll update the firmware. And I think this is a great idea, especially with Sony looking more and more to adding PlayStation games to PC. If PC is the only system you have, but you want to place up these games and have the same feel as playing it on a PS5, you will be able to keep the controller up to date. And finally, we have a little bit of updated information on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. This coming to us from Nintendo Everything, TMNT Shredder's Revenge doesn't have a release date, but it does have a release window, Publisher.mu, along with the developer Tribute Games confirmed that the title will be ready to go this summer on the Switch. And of course this is a Nintendo site, so it's also going to be on all the other platforms as well. That's not all, it's also been announced that the voice actors who played the Turtles in the classic 1987 animated TV series will be returning for this game. Now unfortunately we won't have the original voice of Shredder because the actor James Avery passed away in 2013. And on a side note, if you didn't know who this was, he was Uncle Phil on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Now it looks like Splinter and April are the only playable characters besides the Turtles. I would not be surprised if they add more as a DLC later. A new character could require new animations, not only for the character, but possibly for the enemies as well, depending on what kind of attacks they have. But who knows, they could surprise us with another character before release. And that's all we have for today's video. Did anything catch your attention? If you were not looking at getting Sonic Origins, has all this additional information changed your mind? And do you use a PS5 controller on your PC? And if so, are you only a PC gamer and wouldn't be able to update the controller with a PS5 itself? And when do you think TMNT is going to get released? Do you think it'll be toward the beginning of summer, in the middle, or maybe toward the end? Drop a comment about that or any of the other topics we covered today. I want to thank you for watching and be good.